Hello everybody and welcome once again to TFT Tarot for today, Divine Dabblings with Oberon and Banshee. This is me, Oberon, with my segment of Goth Tarot. It's the weekly exploration into our shadow sides. I do this as a collective reading for everybody, so there's no designation to zodiac signs or anything like that. And this week, for the general reading, I am using the Murder of Crows Tarot. Fabulous, beautiful tarot. I have the limited edition one. I've used it before in Goth Tarot, but not very recently. So I find that it has light and dark and shadow, perhaps, in great measures, I won't say equally. But I think it would be a nice deck to use for Goth Tarot. And of course, just like I've been doing for a couple weeks now, we're doing a uh, variation on the Light Dark Shadow reading or Hidden Selves readings from the Tarot Rituals book by Nancy C. Ananucci. Hope I got that right. And basically the reading is about uncovering the hidden to yourself aspects of your light, dark, and shadow selves. And then at the end I do a new shadow work divination from the Shadow and Light Oracle deck. Okay, so we're going to start with the light, the light's self seeking to Find out what is being hidden from yourself. And in that, we're asking for what are your hidden aspects of love, trust, safety, or joy? Things you don't realize about yourself. large unwieldy deck here let me tell you so I do try to get it all shuffled up very well but it's too hard for Mr. O's fingers just have to be honest all right And it's death reversed. And death reversed as a hidden aspect of love or trust, safety or joy. Well, <clears throat> I would suppose that in the matters that we speak of, there is a deep down part of yourself that cannot accept change and would rather stagnate, would rather be inert than resonate to your to your better light aspects uh, that's pretty much it that you find it hard sometimes to really completely fall in love or completely trust someone or completely see the joy or the safety that that relationship could bring it's a it's pretty much a struggle but I also want to look at another part of this. Beyond that, what do you hide from yourself that is truly what you want to experience? And so I'm choosing that from the bottom of the deck. And it's the reversed Seven of Wands. Maybe you hide this from your light self, but maybe you think sometimes not standing up, not being brave, but hiding or not facing, facing the struggle or the problem is what you really 
want to do. And so, of course, you can see how it does impact with the first card, your, your hidden life self, that you can't come to grips with the fact that it's hard for you to love or trust people. And so you would desire rather to remove yourself. Okay, that's our, our light side. So now we're going to go with our shadow side. And the shadow self that's hidden is, in fact, our hidden skills, gifts or beliefs, the unknown things about ourselves that truly can be hidden from ourselves, but may also represent things that we would want, we wish to hide from others for some reason, perhaps. we hiding even from ourselves as well as others. It's the reverse two of swords. Sometimes we have the ability to see things that we won't always admit to that. And sometimes we feel, and this is a lot like the light part too, but it is the shadow part. Sometimes we feel we should go our own way, even if it is, of course, that way that runs away from things. But I think it's based on the fact that whether it's a conceit or whatever, we really see ourselves sort of separating from that and that maybe to some degree we want to stand alone what our hidden gifts or talents are we want them to be discovered in their own time or to not necessarily be a well-known part of ourself it's a goth mystique thing i guess so then it's it's reverse side is or 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 the the underneath card is from this idea of, of these shadowy things, what what is the most confusing or be bewildering to us even? What, what actually confuses us or perplexes us about our shadow self? And it's a never seven. How, how wild is that? It's the reversed seven of cups. we still think we choose the right thing even when we're just choosing to go maybe a different path or a path that's different from where others thought we were going. It confuses us that maybe we find something that's that radically different, I suppose. Maybe we're confused because we don't realize that we're choosing something, but something gets chosen. That is very shadowy and mysterious. I can't admit necessarily to knowing what exactly that was. So now we're going to move on to what is the actual dark, hidden parts of ourself. What represents the ego, egotist kind of needs for power or whatever we desire. What are our ego needs that we 
Don't admit to that we hide even from ourselves. It's a lovely deck. If only it was easier to shuffle. The reversed five of pentagrams. Our dark need for power says we won't stay out in the dark too long. Our dark side says we'll come back in if we think there's an advantage for ourselves or when we feel we just truly can't take the dark night of our soul ourselves for any longer. And so even as a goth person, as a shadow person, there is a limit to how much of that darkness that we can deal with before we say it's time to find something that helps us. What is it about that perhaps that frightens us the most from the bottom side? It's the Eight of Pentacles, and it's upright. I think it frightens us because we really want things to work out. We want to be in a collective learning experience. It could be our career. It could be our community. It could be our religious or spiritual lives. But it frightens us because it says we need, we need each other. We need people more than we want to admit. And that was sort of brought out in the first part. But I guess to understand that as our, as our dark need, it scares and frightens us to know that we're really maybe not as independent as we think we are. Being goth isn't a superpower. I'm going to say that again. Being a goth isn't a superpower. All right. So now I'm concluding by reading from the Shadow and Light Oracle set. Whoops, I have it wrong way. There we go. And she got this. It's, it's beautiful. <clears throat> and I guess I have those upside down, don't I? Yep. All right, so we're just going to keep using this one. Twenty-nine. Cherishing, suppressing. And so the idea is, of course, that it's a continuum between those two.
Instead of trying to forget things, what if you allowed yourself to cherish the good parts of what was and perhaps even accept the bad things? Suppressing emotions and memories doesn't necessarily make them go away. The pain might go away temporarily, but every time the memory is triggered, you will relive it even more intensely. For example, after a breakup, it is common to get rid of all the things that remind you of that person. But what if you could keep a few things that you used to cherish and reassign meaning to them? Instead of representing heartbreak, could it mean something new to you? Gratitude that you moved on, happiness remembering the good times, thankfulness for what it taught you. This card encourages you to look at your memories with new eyes, not to be afraid of looking at the feelings that might come up for you around certain memories and seeing if you can get them in a different light to give them new positive meanings. It's time to stop hiding and trying to forget the things that have been only because they might have pain attached to them. It's time to open your eyes, use your, see your memories for what they truly are, and rewrite the meaning and purpose of those, of them, so you can move on with them and stop them from causing more pain. Know that it is okay to miss what you, what was once beautiful but no longer is. Things may have turned out for the best, but that doesn't mean it was all for nothing and not worth feeling and remembering the joy of it. The Affirmation I cherish the beautiful moments that have been and take the lesson with me of the things that caused me pain. So that's it for Goth Tarot, and I hope that was helpful. You know, a lot of times, even we don't always understand or accept or see within ourselves our own darkness or our own light or shadow. So thanks for coming, and I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you next time.